Hello and welcome uh, to this masterclass which seeks to trace uh, the evolution and development of uh, various quality revolutions and also uh, will attempt to highlight the influence that quality has had uh, over various stages um, of uh, uh, the, uh, in the industrial revolution and also um, tracking the impact of quality um, in relation to the sophistication of the business world and the adoption of pioneering thinking at uh, various stages. Uh, quality started uh, with uh, what has been termed as the first industrial revolution, uh, the era of mechanization and uh, the exploitation of water and steam power and essentially this era was depicted by large labor content in the provision of uh, value uh, and uh, relying very much on uh, uh, skills basic skills and uh, large numbers uh, of uh, people doing very specific uh, and uh, structured uh, tasks. Uh, quality in this era was tackling very much the imperfections of products, less so on services, because services during the first revolution were not very much in, in evidence. This was due to the fact that there was high demand and the supply was not scaled up enough and sufficient enough to cater for large um, needs and requirements. During the second revolution, um, the quality revolution was uh, became more sophisticated as it uh, related to tools and techniques uh, that shadowed uh, mechanization and the use of uh, sophisticated production techniques, uh, structured assembly lines and the power of driving this industrial revolution uh, was also uh, using uh, new energy source which is electricity. In this stage uh, the real birth of uh, quality took place and uh, the use of uh, statistical process control, uh, control charts and the philosophy of uh, variation. Uh, this goes back to the 1930s onwards uh, where quality was better understood and where management started to take uh, more care in terms of the quality of the products and also the quality of the production system itself. A big revolution, uh, loads of uh, uh, innovations and uh, that really was the quality that changed the world. Until the present day, uh, we still depend very much on those principles and techniques and the philosophy of quality uh, that was pioneered at that time and which was advocated by the godfathers of quality, including, for instance, Dr. Edward Deming and Dr. Joseph Joran. Dr. Barfi Gambon, Professor Kuro Ishikawa, and many others. In the early 80s, a new revolution took place, which was very much the computer era. Uh, computers started to substitute dexterity skills and started to remove uh, labor content uh, through large scale automation. Uh, manufacturing plants enjoyed 
the sophistication of uh, robotics, of, uh, for example, flexible manufacturing systems, the use of computer-aided uh, tools in design, in manufacture, in process management. It was very much the era where the Japanese philosophy of quality took the world by surprise and became the standard that the world uh, tried to adopt. This era made quality more proactively managed, better controlled, with better predictability and more sophistication in terms of adding value and competing with quality. And again, uh, this era has been uh, useful and is still relevant as we speak today. What is emerging, however, now is a new revolution uh, referred to as the digital revolution or the cyber physical systems revolution, where even smarter uh, devices are redefining the way we add value to the customers and also where systems that have the power of um, intelligent thinking are managing large-scale operations without interventions from uh, the human element. Uh, this era is an era where uh, quality is not so much focusing on the output in terms of the product quality or even the service quality. It is very much about uh, scaling up through individualization and personalization and putting the customer uh, at the helm uh, through principles such as uh, co-creation. Uh, this era also challenges the product or the service uh, uh, from the focus on uh, the value currency into value being a perception or being an individual choice. Products and services are gradually being relegated to becoming commoditized and considered to be means to an end as opposed to the end itself. In a sense, the value chain management approach has shifted from what can be referred to as the push model uh, to a pull model of uh, personal needs and expectations. Quality with the sophistication of uh, the ecosystem within uh, the organization and also with uh, this meshing of communication, uh, interdependency and synergy uh, between smart devices, intelligent machines and uh, human capital working in tandem to add value uh, has also started to look at the concept of value creation more from the point of view of a relative stance as opposed to a predictable model for uh, competitiveness. In a sense it introduced disruption on a large scale, which is going to be continuous. So the value creation process uh, is only valid insofar as the customer wants it to remain valid. And also the business model for the organization is only valid for as long as it serves a purpose and it can uh, induce survivability uh, and growth. So with this in mind, the new quality model uh, that uh, one needs uh, to bear in mind is very much one where quality becomes a foundation. What used to be the pinnacle of success is now the license to practice. Without perfection in quality systems, without consistency uh, in delivery, without world-class efficiency 
outcomes and without guaranteeing the minimum requirements in terms of high quality effectiveness, uh, organizations will not be able to compete at a large scale. Secondly, without providing services through experience as opposed to a push approach to services through a volume based approach organizations will not be able to surprise to, to, to survive thirdly without having the customer at the helm for defining contributing in the development deciding on the delivery channel and consuming uh, through individualization the approach to innovation management new product development or service development will be futile uh, if the customer is omitted from the equation or if the involvement of the customer is kept to a minimum uh, possible at the higher level without the ability of organizations to really measure what matters and that is a new dimension of quality as opposed to the traditional quality of the products and the services in terms of uh, functionality or in terms of professionalism uh, in terms of the value proposition itself that will not be sufficient the new dimension measures the impact of quality from an emotional perspective uh, as individualization and personalization force the providers to look at the fulfillment and satisfaction of individual customers through the experience perspective not through the product or the service because as it was alluded to before these have become means to an end so a new science is emerging gradually which is the measurement of customer happiness and that is through the emotional uh, impact of the experience that is unique that is customized and that is memorable to the customer themselves only with these four conditions can organizations contemplate the opportunity of leapfrogging the competition and achieving a dominant position uh, because the disruptive engine uh, through the absorption of uh, digital technology and through the creation of a thriving ecosystem uh, operating through an open uh, perspective with external collaboration uh, and smart partnerships uh, that is uh, the way we can look ahead at the future of quality or the new quality revolution until next time, uh, we wish you the best.